I had this idea for a video for a pretty long time, but I never knew really how to articulate what I wanted to say. Doesn't mean I do now, it just means I'm gonna do it now. Now, unless you just completely ignore the title, then this video is about bad games getting sequels. Primarily Watch Dogs, and I'm gonna talk about games that failed, technically, but did very well with audience that did capture, such as Titanfall. Now, let me rant on about, well, not really rant, but just kind of speak as I am now. This isn't planned at all, so technically it is a rant. About bad game getting good sequel, surprisingly, because the Watch Dogs first game, that was horrible by everyone. I think most critics even didn't like it. They only gave it a 7, surprisingly. But by the general audience, it wasn't liked. Mainly because of boring protagonist, boring story, boring gameplay but you know just a few minor things and then the second one came out and then we had enjoyable characters and i didn't actually play it or watch much on it because the first one kind of killed that series now you would think with how trends have happened in the past if a game fails with one of its sequels why does a game that failed right out of the gate get a sequel in the first place while games that did very well and then failed ended up getting the axe, such as Dead Space. I'm not saying it's bad that these bad games get sequels, in general the second game is much better than the first, mainly because they know, hey let's not do these things that everyone's been complaining about, except for maybe in Knack 2. Yes, that, that there was a second Knack. Apparently it was also shit. I don't buy games that are like removed to be shit, I need to know it's a good game. That's why you're currently looking at Vermintide? I'm playing a lot of Vermintide, so that's probably what's in the background. The second one of that is coming out, and the first one is good, and hopefully the second one is good. I don't understand why they need the second one, but there is some problems with the current engine, and I don't know if it is the engine or anything, but there's problems with the game in the first one that should hopefully be addressed in the second one. Okay, I'm going on a tangent. Back to everything else. But yes, I talked about bad games getting sequels. Now let's talk about a game that failed and got a sequel. Now when I say failed, generally I mean didn't sell millions of millions as EA would expect it to sell. EA and other dickhead companies that just want all of the money. Let's talk about a game that failed but got a sequel that also kind of failed mainly because it is a niche market item. That game is Titanfall and Titanfall 2. Now, I generally complain that you don't need to make a Call of Duty because we already have Call of Duties. It's mainly because this game did the whole Call of Duty formula very well. It hit a niche market and it sold very well to that market and the market said, hey, could you add a campaign to this? We'd really like it. And they added the campaign, and the campaign was good, it didn't feel tacked on because the multiplayer was already done. And the multiplayer on the second game was very similar to the first one, but it did add things that people wanted and change things that people wanted. Now, I called it a Call of Duty earlier, and that's mainly because fast-paced first-person shooter I just call a Call of Duty because it's not really innovative in any way, but it is good in every way. It refines how fast-paced a game should play and does very well and it adds its own little grappling mechanic and giant mecha robots and all those are pretty fun. I need to actually play the game. I really want to and buy it. I just re-listened to everything I said previously. Um, I never talked about what actually causes bad games to get sequels. It's pretty easy to understand and when you understand it, it's kind of scary for innovation in the gaming industry. It happens because of one simple reason. Creativity is really hard. And with creativity being hard, you need to have ideas. But you can't come up with ideas. So you just use ones that didn't work and bank off of those. Even though banking off of those isn't going to make you any money because it failed horribly. 
So they're gonna sink millions of dollars into these games that didn't do well because they were boring and just bad in general, like Watch Dogs, and then they're gonna put more millions into it and pray it makes them some just all the money they need. Now I'm not saying, oh, game developers, they need money. Indie developers need money. AAA developers, tax evasion, all that. They already do that. They make enough money. So, yeah, even though I went on, like, a tangent for sort of two minutes, it's basically just, we don't have ideas that are creative, so let's just do what didn't work in the past, but make it better. Now, that topic's over. Let me talk about a different topic. Um, games... They're kind of becoming very similar nowadays. I call Titanfall a Call of Duty. Well, but it's innovated. Well, it didn't innovate, but it did refine quite a few things. And it did very well. Well, it refined it very well. It, it didn't really sell very well. It didn't sell like Call of Duty would because Call of Duty already exists. And you can't sell like Call of Duty when Call of Duty is your competition. But I was talking about a lot of games becoming very similar. It's because of the whole problem of watering down. Now let me talk about alcohol. I'm Irish, of course I'm gonna use alcohol as an analogy. But this is what I'm talking about. Games are being watered down, so let's talk about alcohol being watered down. And I'm gonna steal a joke here. It's like making love on a canoe. American alcohol is fucking close to water. Basically, companies want to sell to as many people as possible. And then there's companies that want to sell to literally everyone. And the people that want to sell to literally everyone, sells to no one. Because the game that they made does not hit any scratches that people want in their games. For me, I like RTSs, I like slow paced games. That's why I play a lot of Command & Conquer, that's why I play Rainbow Six Siege. You sit on your ass for 10 minutes and die instantly. Or do very well and kill the entire enemy team, but that's my point. I like taking games slow. Not a lot of those games exist anymore. That's why I was really happy when Rainbow Six came out with a new game. Well, I was excited that Command & Conquer was kind of getting a refresher with that game that I can't remember the name of. Apid Armies, which was done by Petroglyph, I believe, which had people from Westwood. No one knows who they are anymore because EA killed them. Because EA wasn't happy with the numbers they were bringing in. They weren't selling to literally everyone. But let's go back to Titanfall. Titanfall sold to a small market. Not the biggest market in the world, but it sold to people and people really enjoyed it. But it didn't sell to literally everyone. It wasn't watered down and mainstream enough to sell to everyone. And let me bring it to alcohol. There are different types of alcohol for a reason. You have your stouts, you have your ales, you have your lager, you have your whiskey, you have your vodka. And you have other types of alcohol, like brandy and stuff, but brandy is a whiskey. Um, yeah, you have all these different types of alcohol, mainly because people want that type of alcohol. I drink stout ale whiskey, which are all very good. I like all of them. I couldn't drink lager. Lager is just not nice to me. Neither is vodka. Now, let me say that to a gaming dev or a gaming director. Hey, I want to make this really bitter thing that will go to only a small market, but that market will really enjoy it and it'll keep coming back to our game. No, we don't want that. Add more water. Make it sure, make sure everyone can drink that, but that the people that I'm trying to sell it to don't want that. And the people that don't drink stout, the really bitter stuff, they, they don't come to the bitter stuff anyway, so they would just drink their lager. Don't care. Water it down. Water it down more. But no one wants a watered down stout. If they wanted something else, they would get something else. They would just drink water. Do you see where I'm getting at now? People that want stouts, drink stouts. People that want lager, drink lager. People that want whiskey, drink whiskey. Even though whiskey, you do water that down just a little bit, but I'm getting off the point. People that want a certain thing, go for that certain thing. They don't want a lesser version of it. They don't want a worse version of it. I mean, everyone says, oh, I want an alcohol. All right, here's a nice, clear, refreshing thing. I don't really want a refreshing thing. I want something nice, thick, and bitter. Or something that burns in the throat on the way down, or something like that. They don't go, oh, I want something clear and refreshing. 
No, they would drink water or soda or whatever you want it's when you want something refreshing. When you want something like alcoholic, you go for something that you want. You want something nice. You want something flavored or something like that. Otherwise, you're just there to get pissed on water-flavored alcohol. So, now that I'm done bitching about the majority of things that I find wrong in the game market, lack of creativity, so they just make the same games over again. Sometimes, quite literally, they make the same IP twice. Even though the first one did terribly, they just couldn't come up with a good enough idea. Not even a better name. And then there's also the problem of every game just trying to get as close to as water as possible, even though people want stouts, whiskeys, ales, lagers. And even when you come to whiskeys, people want bourbon and rye and all those, and scotch. Even when you come to those different types of alcohol, those different types of games, people are going to want different variations on those games. But, nope, water, that's what you get. So, that, yeah, and that's me complaining about lack of creativity and everyone wanting to just make water. Ah... <sighs> Hopefully it gets better. With the indie scene, it everything is getting better in the indie scene. Horror games are genuinely horror games, they're not action games like Evil Within. But Evil Within is an action horror game. If I'm given a shotgun and a grenade launcher, it's not a horror game. Uh, Alien Isolation is going to come around and kick me in the ass, but that's genuinely fucking scary because you can't actually kill the alien, I think. Can you? If you lay enough fucking bullets into the damn thing. Also, tangent on the tangent on my ending of the video, Alien Isolation, look up the AI design of that on YouTube. A guy did a great analysis of that, it's fucking brilliant, and the design of the AI is amazing. I'll probably like, link in the description, it, it really interested me. But yes, end of the video. Games are being watered down. Game creators are being uncreative and just making the same game except building on the fact that everyone hated the first one. So yeah, that's my two cents on the whole game industry is basically shooting yourself in the foot and hoping indie scene picks up after them. And I hope so too. See ya!